travel tripods. One small rig reached out telling me that they have a new tripod and they wanted me to check it out. I really had my hopes up. That's because I've been using small rig cages and small rig L brackets for as long as I remember knowing about small rig. So there are a few things that I am expecting out of a tripod that came from that brand. Their cages and L brackets have always been well built and feature filled. So I'm expecting that this tripod will also be like that. In this video, let's check out the small rig AP20 carbon fiber tripod. When we talk about travel tripods, there are a few things that come to mind. Number one is it should be portable and lightweight. Now this is about 17 inches. I think that counts as portable. You can put it inside the backpack if you have space. And of course, it is lightweight at just 1.5 kilograms given that this is made out of carbon fiber. Well, of course, most of it is made out of carbon fiber. The last common feature that you would look for if you're considering a travel tripod is what actually makes it portable. And in this case, and in most cases, it's the fact that the legs fold up this way so you have less length when you are carrying it and not using the tripod altogether. So those are the things that you look for in a travel tripod. Something lightweight, something portable, and basically something you would carry for long periods of time that counts. However, there are some things that you should be looking into when you're choosing a travel tripod because those things you don't ever want to compromise on. So again, this is just 1.2 kilograms and about 17 inches. But what are the things that actually matter when you're choosing a carbon fiber tripod? Well, I think it would have to be the ratio between the load capacity and the actual weight of the tripod. This is 1.2 kilograms but it can carry 10 kilograms of load. That means that most camera setups, even with longer or heavier telephoto zoom lenses, can be carried by this tripod. Theoretically, if we follow the payload mentioned in the box, it's 10 kilograms, and I don't think I have any combination of cameras and lenses that would actually go beyond that. However, there are also a few things that we should consider outside of that payload. Number one is how well do the locks of the legs actually hold together? Now, one thing I always do whenever I'm talking about tripods and whether they are reliable, this is just me, but I would always consider how well they can function as a walking stick or as a trekking pole whenever I'm out hiking and just see if they will hold together if I put a bit of weight on the tripod. And I usually just do that with one leg extended so that I know that if it can support me in some way, of course I'm not expecting my entire body weight that's way more than 10 kilograms, but if it can somehow hold its own while I am putting some weight onto it, then I don't think that there will be any problem with regards to the friction that the locks have. Now this one comes with flip locks. I don't think they ever came up with a version with twist locks. I personally prefer twist locks, especially considering that the twist lock on the center column looks really nice. It would have looked really nice on these as well. But again, that's just personal preference. I prefer twist locks because I think they're easier to use in my own workflow. But in any case, this does look like something that can hold its own. But yeah, it's made out of plastic. I kind of wish we would have seen a bit more metal on these. But for the price, again, not bad. Now let's move upwards towards the hip joint. This is basically the typical kind of hip joint that you would see on the legs. And you only have to press this button or switch or whatever to basically be able to extend it upwards that way. And it does seem like a very sturdy center joint, so that's not a problem at all. 
Now I know Small Rig actually came out with two versions of this tripod, one with a center column and one without. I kind of wish for my own sake that they sent me the one without the center column because I rarely ever use the center column. Extending the center column is kind of a last resort option for me when I really do need the extra height. But that's something I always avoid when I'm doing long exposures because as you know, if you extend the center column significantly, that is going to raise the center of gravity and this extra height is just going to be more room to shake. So if you are shooting from somewhere with significant winds, this might mean ruining your long exposures because that can give you a bit of camera shake. As you can see, even if I tightly lock that, there is still some wiggle room. Now a kind of unique feature to this is that within that center column, there is another layer of a kind of another telescopic center column right here. But again, that is extra height that can be handy. But of course, I would always, always, always just avoid using the center column. Now, this is of course in the aspect of using it for landscape photography and travel photography, specifically doing long exposures. But of course, if you need the extra height that way, then that wouldn't be a problem if you're just doing very quick shots with fast shutter speeds. Now it does come with this ball head out of the box. And what I can say about it is that it does look sturdy, but it also looks a bit small. It doesn't really look proportionate to the size of the tripod. So this is only about three inches tall. So that's, I don't, I don't know if that actually means anything to you as a photographer but it does feel like it's a bit out of proportion for me. This ball head kind of reminds me of something I've reviewed in the past, but of course the main aspect that you need to check whenever you're choosing a tripod and a ball head, for example, is how well the ball can be held properly. So what I would do is I would get basically the heaviest setup that I have. In this case, it is the Sony a7R5 with my telephoto lens, which isn't too heavy. This is the f4 version of the 70 to 200. And I would basically attach it this way with kind of a skewed angle and conveniently covering my face and just try and see if it's going to be stable. So if you see that the ball is kind of drifting downwards, with the weight of the camera, then that means that even if the tripod can carry 10 kilograms, there is significant difference with how much the ball can carry. Now it doesn't look like it's actually drifting, so that's good. And for this setup, which is about maybe two to 2.5 kilograms altogether, it really can hold it together. Now another added feature of this tripod is the fact that you can actually take out one of the three legs and take out the ball head. Set everything aside. And put them together. And now you basically have a monopod. So if ever you need a monopod for whatever reason, then you can simply take out the leg and the ball head from your camera. Now this is a feature I first saw way, way back with the Benro Travel Angel tripod. I don't know if Benro was the first one to come up with a feature like this. However, with my experience, it's something that I rarely ever used, but it was useful whenever I had the use for it. Putting everything together, everything we've talked about from the flip locks to the legs to the payload to the overall weight, Objectively, this is a good tripod considering the price. Again, that's 149 US dollars. And there are tripods that you can get for less, but actually don't perform as well. Now, I recently used this tripod during my recent hike at Masungi G Reserve. Masungi is basically a protected forest land that I am working with and I'm doing photo tours there to help them raise more funds for operations and conservation of the 2,700 hectare land that we must protect to avoid catastrophic flooding in Metro Manila in the Philippines. 
And that hike is basically a half day hike with a lot of photographers and I really wanted to minimize the amount of gear that I was carrying. So a travel tripod in carbon fiber would really be of help in terms of reducing that amount of weight that I will carry on my back. Now it did do well. I Again, I used it as a walking stick as well. I did do some long exposures with the telephoto lens and I did not see any camera shake on it. I just haven't processed the photos because I'm using the a7R5 and I'm waiting for the raw support for that camera. But looking at the JPEGs, I don't see any problem or any camera shake given off by the wind blowing on the center column or on the tripod itself. So it's lightweight, it's portable, it's carbon fiber, it does have okay flip locks, it has an okay central joint, it has a center column that will be useful whenever the need arises. And as I said, the ball head is okay, but I feel like it's quite small. Objectively, it's an okay tripod, but what I do have to say about this tripod is that this does not seem to be the tripod I would have expected to come from small rig. Again, I've been using their L brackets, their cages, even their clamps and their arms for so long. And I would have expected something more feature filled coming from small rig. I know that they have a lot of accessories that are ultra functional and modular. So I would have wanted to see more of those features in this tripod. The only trace of that that I can see on here is this port for, for one of their arms to put here. So you can maybe attach an arm here and use it to attach another accessory, maybe a remote or whatever. But I would have expected more. I really did expect more. I've always known Small Rig to be that brand who kind of thinks of every possible way to make certain things fit into other things. And again, that's what I wanted to see out of this tripod. I'm not disappointed with the tripod per se. I do think it's really functional. It would be a good tripod to consider if you are working under a tight budget. but. Just considering the other products that I have that come from this brand, I know that there could have been a lot more features to see in it. And I, would, I wouldn't really mind seeing it a bit more pricey, maybe even $50 more, if there were more features on this one. I think small rig kind of has an edge because a lot of people use their brackets, use their cages, and they could actually put a unique feature that would be on their ball heads that would only fit with their L brackets. Now that doesn't mean making their ball heads non-universal. You should always maintain the fact that they are Arca Swiss type compatible and the brackets are also like that. But if you could put something in there that would make them work better or an added feature that would work with the ball head or the tripod and the L bracket, that would really be a tripod that is more worth calling a tripod from small rig. Now this tripod did come from small rig themselves, but I am saying this as a user of their products for way too long already. Again, it's a good tripod with a good price, but considering the possibilities that they could have put into this, I would have wanted to see more. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. And also if you have questions or if you have any suggestions to small rig about what they should put in their tripod that would make it more small rig like, then leave them down below in the comment section. And of course, if you are new to the channel, my name is Nico Valenzuela. I am a landscape and architectural photographer. And this channel talks about landscape photography, architectural photography, and all the gear in between. So if you are into that, then press the subscribe button and click that notification bell so you will be notified whenever I have a new video. In any case, thank you for watching. This is the Small Rig AP20 Carbon Fiber Travel Tripod. And thank you for watching.